Hi, I'd like to take you back to a project I did almost 10 years ago, something which is very dear to my heart. I see it every day. And anyway, I hope you enjoy this old video footage. We have a central plywood core, which is attached using plywood splines to a wrapping of planar oak, which is mitered in the corners. And once that's all glued up and flattened off, squared up. It's then covered by a pair of bookmatched quarter sawn oak veneers on the front of the door and some bookmatched plain oak veneers on the back of the door. From the bandsaw our veneers have come one smooth side that we planed before cutting and then a bandsaw side. With the saw veneers clamped suitably to the bench we can now remove all the bandsaw marks. With the veneers planed nice and flat, we can lay them out ready for veneering our cabinet doors. And I've gone with a book match pattern for each door. So I've got veneer 0 with the reverse side up against veneer 1, and the reverse side of veneer 2 against veneer 3. So I'll just mark the joints that need to be jointed. To join the edges of the veneers, this is the joint I want in the middle of the two veneers. I fold them together, set the edges to be jointed just off the edge of a straight piece of MDF, place another piece on top, clamp to the workbench and then shoot the edge with a hand plane. Just a few strokes and we're taking full shavings off the edges of the veneers and now when we open them up they should have a nice tight joint Now I'm going to cut some strips of oak that we can wrap around the plywood core so that when we lay our veneer on top it's going to look like a, a solid board. After cutting to rough length each piece has a face and face edge prepared on it. Now we mark out for the mitres of the frame. Then we cut and shoot the mitres. Now we can glue in the spline to make a good strong joint. Here's a picture of the panel all glued up. A suitable clamping arrangement like this where we have thinner boards clamped to the bench around the board we're working on make levelling of the edging a lot easier. Having flattened the panels I bring them into a perfect rectangle by just planing the edges up and also make sure that they're nice and square too. Lightly sand using a large block so we don't round the edges over. Apply a bit of glue. Our oh, first veneer. And we can actually use the tape, if we're gentle, to, to butt up against with the veneer as part of our lining up process. OK. 
Okay, that's good. It will want to curl as soon as it gets some dampness from the glue. So let's be as quick as we can. Get some pressure down on it. Leave that for 12 hours and then you can take the clamps off. So 12 hours have elapsed. Let's see what our veneer looks like. And there we have our first veneer. And we've got some marks to line it up with. Up those up. And there we have the face of the door veneered. squeeze out the first job now that's all glued on is to cut off the excess veneer and the edges um, plane the edges up nice and flush the veneered surfaces with scrapers. I'm using a Stanley number 80 here and um, that does a fine job. Once we've got it flat we can move on and hand sand it so it's perfectly smooth as well. With the doors built, we can now measure up for the size of the cabinet. Having thickness of boards, I can now rip and plane them to the correct width. And cross cap to length. Then I can set up my grooving plane to run a groove around the back of the components to take the back of the box. The grooves on the top and bottom need to be stopped so at the ends we need to chop them out with the mortise chisel. Of course you could do these grooves with a router but uh, I like the enjoyment of doing it by hand. Now it's a lot less dusty. I've set out the components for the box of the cabinet the two sides, the top and the bottom on the bench here, exactly where they should be. The right width apart for the doors and with the designed 5mm overhang of the bottom and the top from the sides. And I'm going to be joining all those components together using 
my homemade doweling jig. I've set the collar on our doweling bit so we don't go too deep. Now I can pop an index pin in, hold everything square, move my clamp, With the first four holes drilled, I can use an indexing pin to move the jig across like that in the previous hole. Then we need two more holes at this end so we can index off either one of these two. And there we have our seven dowel holes. To dowel the holes, at the top of the side, we're registering off the outside, uh, same as we did for the for the bottom of the case. Put our five millimeter spacing in, so that our dowel holes are going to be centered. The jig goes on top of that, and we register up against the same stop. So with that clamped, we can drill those holes. begin with I just do two holes then try with a couple of dowels in to make sure the alignments correct I don't want to commit to every single hole until I'm sure and that's good I've got my 5mm overlap here and round the back here if you can see we're nice and flush on the back surface so I can now continue and drill the rest of those holes. And then it's the same for each corner. And there we have our adjustable shelf holes. To measure for the back, we first measure the depth of the slots and we need to add twice that measurement to the measurements we now take between the two sides and between the top and the bottom. That will give us the total size of the back we need. That's perfect fit side to side. And that's just a little bit snug from top to bottom. So we'll take a little bit off of the top. As I fit the back, I want to keep checking the diagonals to make sure I keep it square. So before we actually glue the cabinet together, I think it's best if we mortise for the knife hinges. To mark out for the knife hinges, I set my doors on the cabinet where they're going to go. I've got some spacing behind them here, and I've flushed up the edges with the cabinet. And I just mark lightly with a pencil the position of the door. And we do that both sides. And we also mark the inside of the door. I've put a centre line in for where this hinge position is going to be. And now I can position the hinge, making sure that the centre of the pivot lines up with the outside of the case. And now I'll do that with some double stick tape on the back, which will hold it in place whilst I knife round it. 
So now I carefully scribe round the hinge. I'll take the, the hinge and just mark down a depth on the very end where it comes through the board. Again with the knife. And then we can start to chisel out. So I place it in the line that I've described. Give it a little knock. If it's soft enough I can just pair this. When we get to the curve We can't remove as much material. I like to ease it a bit by taking out the central part. Now I'll take a gouge as close to the, uh, the radius as I can get for the hinge. Just take a few stabbing cuts. around the knife line and then break that material away with a smaller chisel. Now I can go back and just deepen that mortise a little bit. Then I come in with a router plane and just finish off to depth. But of course you can just continue with chisels. Now we position the other half of the hinges on the doors in the middle of their thickness and with the pivot hole halfway overlapping the end of the door. Then we take our scalpel again and outline our hinge. This is where a small router plane is very handy and we just remove material a little at a time until we've mortised down to the correct depth. So there we have our cabinet door, nicely hinged. I've come up with a little latch to hold the doors shut and to provide a positive backstop for them as well. When the door is pushed against this bevel, it springs down, the door can ride over this lower section, hit the backstop and then the, because it's sprung up it will hold the door in place. I'm actually going to mount this in the top of the cabinet and I shall put a solid button whose top surface is level with the bottom of the door down at the bottom, so opposing this and that will stop the door being pressed down rather than the spring taking up the slack in this latch. And I'll just show you how this is made up. So we have We've got a small spring that comes from a pen, a screw, and then I've just shaped this little latch. So we're beveled on the front, so when the door contacts the front of this bevel, it will push against the spring up into the top of the cabinet. You can then move along this ramp, hit the backstop, and then the pressure of the spring down on the top of the door will hold it in place. And then I've just got a mortise for the whole assembly, a tiny little mortise to hold the spring in place at the bottom. And we can adjust the amount of movement by how tight we do the screw. So before I glue up the cabinet, I should be cutting the mortise, preparing a second one of these latches, pop those two in the top of the case, and pop two little flat buttons into the bottom of the case directly below these and to the same height as the bottom of the doors. Reversing the protection blocks allows you to copy the same profile 
on the opposite side. Use a long sole plane to finish up just to make sure your strokes are nice and straight. And then we can move these blocks to the other end and copy the profile yet again. And some sanding with a, a long block just finishes the job off. For those edges that just want a fine bevel, I use a smoothing plane held at 45 degrees, set very fine. Count the strokes I'm taking until I get the sort of bevel I want and then repeat that number of strokes on all the other edges that I want. I've got my four legs clamped together with the inside faces where I'm going to have the mortises for the, the front rails and I lay out in pencil first of all roughly where they're going to be then I double check and then knife them in. Square those lines across all the boards and I prepared one of the side rail ends with double tenons. And then we can start to remove material from the side of the tenon. And then we just waste away that material. So with that now cleaned up, I want to drop the, these top cross rails down a quarter of an inch and because it's a half lap joint I'll just want to remove an eighth of an inch from these rails. And I wish to put a dowel through the middle, so a mark from the corners and then drill for a dowel straight down the middle. Now we cut the same profile on the intersecting cabinet rail and they should go together nicely. And that completes all the joinery on our stand. And all that's left to do now is to ease over some of the edges and put some decorative bevels on where we feel we'd like them. The stand for this project uses mortise and tenons and open mortise and tenons and partial half laps.
I decided to go with a, a plain lower rail on the side of the stand and the actual joint line is, is quite long to keep the rigidity within the stand. The case itself shows off the pippy oak, cat's paw oak to great effect. I finished the piece on the outside uh, with a finishing oil which is a tongue oil mixture with a polyurethane in it. The front of the case shows the lovely quarter sawn oak veneers that we cut and you can now see really for the first time the handles that I produced for this piece. The handles are designed to look as though the front of the door has been peeled back like the cover of a book and I've displayed underneath a, a veneer of mahogany just to give some contrast. The handles are attached by cutting a groove into the front of the door and then I've got a, a long tenon on the back of that handle that just fits into the groove and the mahogany veneers I simply cut back the oak veneer and applied a small veneer of mahogany and trimmed it up to the door edges. There really is quite a curl to the handle. I roughed these handles out on my bandsaw and if you watch the videos I did on basic bandsaw techniques you'll see one of the techniques that I used and you should be able to work out how to cut these. Looking down at the closure buttons I can see that the right hand door is rubbing a little more than the left. And I'm going to leave that uh, for the cabinet to acclimatise to its new position for a month or so and then tackle any issues with tightness on the doors. The sprung latches at the top work very well. Overall I'm really pleased with this little project. I hope you enjoyed watching it and that you'll continue to watch future projects on my channel.